Hi, and welcome to AFTV. We've got my guy with me, Kenny Ken. Bro, 3 0. Listen, I, I'm happy. I don't know how you feel on the on the performance, but I've judged Arteta on this performance and he made some right decisions. What, what was your thoughts? I thought, you know, like I said, good rotation. The players who came in did the yeah. job very well. David Luiz, you know, he's played this is his second game, second clean sheet, no complaints. Rob Holding, a player that I'm not a big fan of. You know, another clean sheet. Leno, another clean sheet. Very happy. First off, you know, I thought I thought Newcastle just came for a smash and grab. And we just, for some reason, our tempo went was inconsistent. We started off really quickly. Then we went slow again and really quick. And, you know, Aubameyang should put that chance away. Difficult angle. But, you know, a season ago, he puts that away. You know, um, I wasn't too happy, you know, with um, certain players um, like, you know, Lacazette. And I thought that the best player on the pitch from um, on both sides was probably Almiron because he's the only one player out of both sides who showed consistent urgency. But the second half, I think the tempo started when um, Lacazette had that shot that was saved by Darlow. Once yeah. that shot, once um, Darlow makes that save, that was the t- you know test of things to come. Special mention has to go to Thomas Partey, not just for um, his involvement in the first goal, but his also involvement in the second goal as well. The way he just links the midfield together. It's good pass to the ball, keeps it simple. But that pass for like for Abamyang for the first goal, very good, very exquisite. Mm-hmm. Abamyang mm-hmm. running at pace. I don't care what what you say. When he's running at pace, with that bit of confidence, I think he got his eye in the in the first half with those chances. You know, puts in the back in there. That's the Abamyang of old. That's the Abamyang yeah. that we saw at Wembley. And then you know, second second bit of a play that I was very happy with Partey as well was that, and Abamyang was involved in that as well. Was Starts to move, great pass. Aubameyang, good pass to Smith Rowe, quick feet, and Saka, who's playing very well, you know, got you know scores again, and and that yep. was game over. And after that, it was just a question of where we get three or four in the, in, in the next one. That's how bad Newcastle were. Heads went down, and I think what we, what we did, which I was very pleased as well, is that because Newcastle weren't pressing the, the play, the front, especially their front two weren't pressing. We've been very, we were first to the ball. Smith Rowe was showing a lot of energy. But, and, you know, I think Newcastle got away with one there because we only got one more goal through C, you know, Cedric's assist and Aubameyang gets another one. But this is how I want us to play from now on. Quick tempo, yeah. you know, make, make things difficult. We're not always going to play teams like Newcastle. There's going to be teams that are better than Newcastle. Our next two games are very likely going to be against Southampton, who you don't know whether Southampton are going to take the FA Cup seriously, but definitely going to take the league game seriously. And that's where I, that's where I think we need to keep on playing with that tempo. And, you know, it's not probably not going to be easy to keep the same personnel, but the tempo, tempo, you know, I've got a nag about that because when we play like that, we make ourselves difficult to beat. It's no good having clean sheets because the only people who are going to benefit from clean sheets is the goalkeeping defence. The forwards and you know the creative players have to, you know, take some responsibility because, as you all know, by this time tomorrow, there's going to be a massive void in our football club. Mm, 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 mm. Kenny, <laughs> I just want to quickly touch on something there. Um, the back line, barring Kier, bar Kier, barring Kieran Tierney, it's going to be difficult. I don't know if you would like to, because I think they keep their shirts, but I did question. Obviously, it was Louise and Holden. They were they were the the partner too. I prefer Gabriel, but however, Holding kept his shirt. In my opinion, did really well. And then Cedric, I think had a great game. I don't know if you'd like to see Bellerin return, or does he keep his shirt? Like, what are your thoughts on that? On like those sort of those those three players at the back? I think the thing about it is that sometimes, right, is that ideally you want to keep a winning team. But I think with the Premiership now, is that there's teams that have got different qualities. And, you know, yeah. as, as you can see, is that there's a gap, which, there's not so much a gap between the top teams and, and even going all the way down to about 10th or 11th. So, basically, there's teams of similar quality to us. So, it's not always going to play, you know, Cedric Suarez is right back. You know, you may, you may want to go with his first choice in Bellerin because Bellerin's got more pace than Cedric Suarez in terms of from mm-hmm. a defence of that um, outlook. And then you've got to look at the same sort of thing as well. When we play Southampton, um, there's going to be loads of pace, isn't it? Loads of pace and movement. Theo Walcott's got a lot of pace, as we all know. If, um, you know, Ings has got quick quick movement, quick feet, you know, gets into mm. areas. He's got a quick mind as well. So, you know, 
the personnel that we had today may not play again. And also you want to, you know, by all means, also look at our midfield as well. That doesn't always pick itself as well. So it's all it's going to be have to be horses for courses. Because if you look yeah. at our next fixtures, so Hampton, then you've got Man United, then after that, you Villa, although, you know, Villa may not be at the races because they've had um, been hit with COVID. But then you've got Leicester, Wolves. You know, Wolves will be smart enough after they lost in the Black Country Derby against West Brom. So we're going to be mm-hmm. playing better sides. So I know you're thinking, you know, let's keep a winning team, but it's not always going to be possible because of the the personnel you're going to play. And who knows, with Wolves, they might sign a forward. You know what I mean? It'd be more yeah. Because they're going to have to sign someone now where uh, Jimenez is um, in- injured. Yeah. No, Kenny, I agree with you, bro. I actually think we need to, as a manager, if I was Arteta, you have to adapt to the team you're playing against. So that's why I said at Palace, it'd been interesting because it's a whole different sort of opposition to what we've had. So that's why I was very much kept my eye on who the team selection was. And I think going forward, you has see, to be... Sorry, cut in. But don't... don't... Sorry, sorry, Cutton, but don't get me wrong. You know, Rob Holden is never going to be my first choice as a centre-half, especially in that yes, right-hand centre-half. But he's keeping clean sheets. He's, he's done nothing wrong. And, you know, he, and he is central to um, our defensive sheet. My biggest problem with Rob is that when we are trying to start attacks, and, you know, like, you know not just from long passing, but running out of the ball, he's, all, he's hopeless. He really is hopeless. Mm-hmm. The only thing yeah. he does is he gets the ball, says, oh, no, I'm getting a nosebleed here. Let me just pass it back. That's that's not what we need, especially when teams, you know, teams um, kind of um, put men behind the ball, especially two banks of four. And it's not always possible to get, you know, Sacker and Smith on the ground. You want someone with a bit more like a David Luiz, long pass on the ball, yeah. or someone like um, Gabriel who can run, come out of the ball. Mm-hmm. And that's something yeah. that's yeah. where... I have reservations about Mari as well. I know Mari's got a nice left foot and everything, but in terms of coming out with a ball and with great pace and take, taking them players with him and then releasing space um, for our midfielders and attackers, Gabriel is, is better than um, Mari and Holden than that. And in terms of yeah. long passing, David Luiz is better. So David Luiz. For, me, for me, I know people criticise David Luiz in terms of his defensive um, lapses, but then again, he's been doing that for the last 10 years. We've known about yeah. David Luiz from when he first came from Benfica to Chelsea and then he went back to Benfica and then came back to Chelsea. Nothing's mm. changed. But one thing David Luiz does is that in attacking, when teams, you know, put men behind the ball, great long pass to the ball. You can't take that away from David. You can't do that. And plus, he's, he's a devil as well. Look what he's doing there with um, um, Andy Carroll. Knew full well that he was going to lose headers to him. So what did he do? Didn't even let him have the second balls. Little nudge here yeah. that the referee doesn't see. Put him off. Put him off balance. You know, he's cute like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, listen, Kenny, um, before we go, I just want to quickly just get your man of the match for the game today um, before we wrap up. Well, you've got to give it to Bamian because I've been after him. You know, I've been critical of him. I've been shouting at yeah. him. I've been asking him to be dropped. But it's not just the two goals. He, You know, he looked up for it. He was sharp. You know, burst of pace. You know, he didn't let his head go down when he missed that that chance from a difficult angle. Straight afterwards, he, he hit the ball over the bar. But I think when he gets his... I think, you know, it's like... Um, a Bamiang reminds me of, a, you know, like a couple of bowlers, like Stuart Brawl and, you know, um, Curtly Ambrose. You know, when they get their legs pumping, you know, mm. and they're really up for it. You know, when a, leg, a Bamiang gets his leg pumping, and he hasn't done yeah. that for a couple of months. Wow. You know that you know that we're going to see some um, good things from him, and he's going to see some goals. And you know what I mean? Maybe he was injured, maybe that time, or maybe he just lost a bit of confidence because the team was playing badly. And you know the pressure in him to be some sort of a leader um, d- didn't suit him well. Well, obviously we know a player who who also um, had the big wages and couldn't cope with the sort of um, talism and road that we had planned for him. But that's another story, and, and, another and that's story. something that we won't have to worry about no more. Yeah, he's, he's gone now. He's gone oh, now. Oh, sorry. Who, who's that again? I'm sorry. May I remind you that the, the story today was Arsenal-Newcastle. I know there's a lot of pork chops who, who want to mm. go and talk a lot of rubbish about about has-been, who, who, who may not be at the football club, but I'm sorry, mate. You're not the story today, pal. It's, yeah, about, it's, football, it's about Arsenal Football Club. You're just going to have to be the story somewhere else, pal. Goodbye back. and good riddance. <laughs>